Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'll continue the series on the Scandinavian defense with the main line, uh, which is the move queen to a5, uh, and the main move as the main response to knight to c3. And I have to say this is a very flexible opening system, and it's not really an opening, because both sides have a piece setup that they aim for, and that they can achieve basically without any interruption. So most often after queen a5 uh, for black, you're going to have the same opening system, which makes it really easy to learn and really easy to use. And I've actually been uh, preparing this system uh, for a while now, and I want to use it as my secondary weapon, weapon with Karo Khan, along with Karo Khan, because I have the same structures uh, with different issues, and since it's uh, more forced than the Karo Khan, uh, it restrains white, white op white's option a lot and gives black a free hand to, to expect a middle game and to be sure that a middle game he wants is going to arise. So we are going to be dealing with the same pawn structure, uh, which I uh, explained in the introductory video. If you haven't seen it, please do. So white is going to have a pawn on d4 and black is going to have a Karokan pawn structure with pawns on e6 and c6, which means that white is going to have a weakness on d4 because of the knight on c3, the Scandinavian knight on, knight on c3. So white's main idea is going to be to break open the structure, sometimes with d5, sometimes with f4, f5, and it's going to be really hard uh, to achieve in the main line of the Scandinavian defense, so white's plans are going to change slightly, and we're going to see how. Uh, most often in these structures in the main line, uh, both sides are going to actually castle queenside, which makes the main line uh, slightly more aggressive uh, than the other variations. So let's uh, go into the opening. So after e4, d5 uh, for black the Scandinavian defense, or the center counter uh, defense, we have e takes d5, Knight takes d5, queen takes the pawn, and now knight to c3, white's most popular move, attacking the queen. Now the queen can go to d8, which we are going to go over in a separate video. The queen can also go to d6, which is going to be another video, which are, those are two very different variations. And today, after knight to c3, we are going to go over the main line, which is queen to a5. Now, after having studied the opening, uh, I couldn't really understand what the purpose of queen to a5 was apart pr from it being the most active square when you compare d6 d8 and a5 it's definitely the most active square after white's normal continuation d4 uh, qu the queen on a5 does pin the knight so white is going to have to do something about that but on the other hand the queen is also a tempo gainer and quite an uncomfortable piece which is going to have to move several times. The good thing about queen a5 is that it's a lot less flexible than d8 and d6 which makes white's play kind of forced, which makes white uh, black's play easier, and black knows what to expect in these variations. We're going to go over two moves on move 5 for black, which basically transpose, and then we are going to have uh, a huge branching on move 8 for white, and that's where the uh, things heat up and where white gets to decide what to do uh, in the opening. At the end of the video we are going to also look at one game uh, of Peter Swidlers, which he lost against the Scandi Scandinavian this, in this variation, so we are going to see how black actually wins these positions. So let's go. After d4, uh, black wants to achieve uh, one common setup, and that setup is uh, pawns on e6, pawns on c6, uh, bishop outside of the pawn chain uh, on f5 most, most commonly because you want to develop your bishop before you play e6. You want to have your knight uh, on f6 and the knight on, on b8 is going to go to d7. So black setup is knight f6, knight d7, bishop f5, e6, c6. This is the setup. e6 and c6, bishop f5, knight f6, knight d7. White on the other hand wants to have a setup like this. Knight on f3. The bishop wants to go to d2, unpinning the knight and gaining a tempo on the queen in many variations. Uh, the white squared bishop wants to go to c4, which is the most active square, and that's going to be white setup. So knight f3, bishop d2, bishop c4. And once again, black wants to play knight f6, knight b to d7, e6, uh, I'm sorry, c6, bishop f5, e6. Okay, so both sides, as I said at the start of the video, can uh, create their, their setups without any interruption. So even though the Scandinavian uh, has a reputation of a very aggressive opening, there's no opening battle for the first few moves, and both sides have, can play calmly. So let's achieve the setups for both sides. Knight to f6, knight to f3. 
Uh, black can here choose between bishop f5 uh, or uh, c6, which are the two most common moves. And uh, we are going to look at them as the main line. I'm just going to cover three uh, very, very uh, rare sidelines. Not very rare, but much rarer than bishop f5 or c6, because you're basically uh, steering clear from the main line. So these three might be good surprise weapons. So bishop g4 is one of them. After bishop g4, white should play h3 and bishop h5, g4, bishop g6, knight e5. This is not considered too good for black and white is supposed to have an advantage. But it's playable. e6, bishop g2, c6, knight takes g6, h takes castles. And black is considered to be worse here. If you turn on the engine, it's, it's plus 1.3. Uh, so bishop g4 isn't really a popular sideline for a very good reason. Another sideline is knight to c6, which is kind of prov provocative. And you don't want to allow uh, white to have an easy time playing d5 and once you play knight to c6 it's really hard to play c6 so knight c6 is provocative because it goes against the scandinavian pr principles for black uh, white should continue with bishop b5 knight to d7 unpinning castles a6 chasing the bishop away now bishop c6 bishop c6 knight to e5 is the is the main continuation uh, black has been uh, no, known to play some uh, dangerous stuff here uh, like castles but in lower rated games higher rated players are going to play e6 and sometimes allow uh, the, the knight to take on c6 so this variation I, I really don't like either so if you get this on the board i mean it's playable for black but your pawn structure is ruined and the material is equal for now but I just wouldn't recommend that. So that would be knight to c6. And another sideline which is forced is knight to e4, pinning the, the c3, attacking the pinned c3 knight once more, bishop d3 attacking the knight, knight takes c3, b takes c3, and now you can win a pawn, uh, but if you win a pawn, it's really dangerous. So this sideline with knight to e4, I would recommend if you're playing a lower rated player uh, who won't know how to utilize the initiative because if you take the pawn white is going to have a huge initiative despite being a pawn down so let's see what happens queen takes c3 check bishop develops with tempo queen to a3 is the best move castles queen to d6 the queen retreats c4 e6 bishop c3 bishop e7 you can see that black is a long way away from developing and white has two very menacing bishops on d3 and c3 the queen is coming into the game there are greek sacrifices all over the place and uh, if i turned on the engine it's going to go crazy saying that white is almost plus two which is quite understandable considering black's development and you do have a pawn but it's really scary so let's go back after knight to f3 as i said bishop g4 knight to c6 and knight to e4 are three sidelines which in the bishop g4 sideline, your, your bishop is going to be captured on g6. In knight c6, you are going to have doubled pawns on c7 and c6, if white knows what he is doing. And in the knight e4 lines, you can win a pawn, but it's quite dangerous. So I wouldn't recommend any of these. After knight to f3, you should basically create your ideal setup. Let's go over the setup again. Bishop f5, c6, e6, knight to d7. That's objectively the best way. I'm sorry, for black to play. So you should go for that. You can play bishop f5 or c6. It doesn't really matter. Uh, they will most often transpose. So let's go to this position, knight f3. c6 is slightly more common, so I would recommend that. Uh, white continues with his setup. We said bishop d2, bishop c4. So let's continue with bishop c4, the most active square. Uh, you don't want to play e6 now because then your bishop on c8 is dead, so bishop f5. And as I said, you can intercha interchange these two moves. You can play bishop f5 before c6, but it will transpose. Bishop to d2, e6. Both sides have achieved their setup and neither king has committed yet. The black king can't castle, the white king could castle, but it's not the most popular move. And now... Uh, we are going to go over three different moves. This is where white decides what the variation will look like. And this is where things get exciting. So now, <clears throat> if we go back to the pawn structure, as I said in the introductory video, uh, white often has problems with the d4 pawn, which is often black's main target in the position. Black wants to castle and put his rooks on the d-file, attack the d4 pawn and create some pressure. All of that is possible because the knight is on c3. The knight on c3 prevents white from playing c3, defending the pawn. 
Okay, it does help with white pushing d5, but with the pawns on e6 and c6, it's hard to play uh, d5. So this whole variation, uh, the two main moves in the variation are getting rid of the knight on c3 and exchanging it for the f6 knight. The move queen to a5 has a downside. It's, uh, well, the bishop on d2 is looking at the queen. So white has two tactical moves uh, trying to exchange the knight. One of them is knight d5. The other one is knight e4. Both moves uh, open up the bishop to attack the queen and want to exchange the c3 knight for the f6 knight. If we come back to this position, uh, the knight on f6 is a great defender, controlling a lot of key squares. The knight on c3, as we said, is blocking the c3 pawn, which is a move white definitely wants to play. So, so the move knight d5 and the move knight e4, with the same idea in mind, have a very clear purpose of getting rid of the weakness in the position. Sort of weakness, because the d4 pawn is not weak at the moment, but as I said in the Scandinavian, it, it's one of black's uh, main attacking points. Uh, another move that black often plays, uh, the second most popular move, knight e4 is actually third, is queen to e2. Queen to e2 doesn't go for the exchange, and we are going to go over that first. And this variation with queen to e2 uh, is quite forced. So now let's go uh, over the lines. Uh, black plays bishop b4, castles, and as I said, in the main line of the Scandinavian defense, both sides will usually castle queenside. Knight b to d7, black completes his uh, development of the minor pieces. a3 attacking the bishop. The best move is actually to take. Bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, queen to c7. And as I said in the introductory video, in the Scandinavian, black is often going to be deprived of the bishop pair. Uh, most often it's going to be the light squared bishop, but in this variation it's the dark squared bishop. But most often white is going to have the bishop pair, which is not that bad considering black's pawn structure and the fact that the light squared bishop doesn't have that many targets. So, uh, exchanging the dark squared bishop is not a good idea, but it's considered to be fine for black. Even though you, all of your pawns are light, light squares and you have a lot of dark squared weaknesses, uh, it's fine. Knight e5 is the main move. Knight takes e5. Taking with the pawn is much better, of course. d takes e5, knight d5. Bishop to d2, castles queenside. This is the start of the vari variation. Now, if you look at the position, I think that it's equal. Uh, I would always rather have black here because I'm used to playing with this pawn structure and I feel comfortable with it. But it depends on which openings you play. And if you play the Karokan or the Scandinavian, then this is what you are used to, even the Semislav. So now uh, white wants to play aggressively. He wants to try and break up black's uh, perfectly solid position. So g4 is the most common plan of attack. Bishop g6, f4 h5, h3, queen b6, rook h to f1, hg4, hg4, queen c5. This is all theory and there have been a lot of games played from this position. So both sides are going to be battling for the h file and black is most commonly going to seize it. Bishop b3, saving the bishop. Rook to h3, uh, threatening to take the bishop because the pawn is pinned. Rook f3, rook d to h8, rook d to f1, rook h2. Queen to e1. This is sort of the end of theory. Uh, this is move 23 and still we are in theory. There are still a couple of games. So you can see that that both sides want, want activity. Black wants to attack the f to weakness, attack the king. And white has a lot of play on the f file. And uh, f5 uh, is going to be a very scary move to meet for, for white. For black, I'm sorry. So this is queen to e2. After queen to e2, both sides will castle queen side, and there's going to be a lot of play in the position. And you never have to fear about having a boring game in the main line of the Scandinavian. But uh, let's go over the main lines now. Uh, after e6, uh, as I said, most commonly uh, white is going to either play knight d5 or knight e4. Uh, on the first glance, both moves are similar. The difference is even though they, they have the, bow, uh, the same idea in, in mind of exchanging the f6 knight for the c3 knight, the difference is that after knight e4, black has the b6 square and the c7 square, and after knight d5, black only has queen d8. Okay, so after queen to d8, uh, after knight to d5, the line is forced, queen d8 is the only move. After knight to e4, black can also play queen c7, after which white takes the knight and ruins the pawn structure, knight takes, g takes, the same thing happens after queen b6, knight takes, g takes. Uh, so black will most often after knight e4 go for the main line, queen to d8, retreating the queen. And after knight takes f6, queen takes f6, 
We have transposed to the 95 main line, which we are going to look at now, and I'm going to come back to knight e4. After knight e5, queen to d8 is the only move. Knight takes f6. Uh, black now has to make uh, an important decision. You have to choose between two bad moves. One of them is g takes, the other one is queen takes. g takes obviously ruins your pawn structure. And that is the main line. You have a ruined kingside pawn structure. Your, your bishop is going to go to g6, where it's most often going to be captured by the knight on h4. If you take with the queen, however, your queen is exposed here, and it's on a very bad square. So if the bishop gets uh, to g5, your queen has to go to g6, which isn't such a good square. There's knight h4, and there's attacks. So you have to choose. Uh, so after queen to d8, knight takes f6, the main line is g takes, after queen uh, takes f6, it's queen to e2, the main move, knight d7, castles queenside, knight b6 attacking the bishop, bishop b3, bishop g4. So bishop g4 is basically preventing uh, bishop to, to g5, because if now bishop g5, then queen takes, knight takes here, so black will be better here. So white uh, has a definite edge, white has already castled, and white has misplaced, misplaced the black queen. That's the reason why in the main line uh, queen takes f6 is the less popular move. So after knight takes f6, g takes f6 is the most popular move, bishop to b3. This is a sort of Sicilian idea, retreating the bishop from c4 to b3, uh, not to be harassed by any pieces. Knight to d7, black goes on with his development. Queen to e2 is once again the most common move. You don't really want to castle kingside coming into the open g-file. Queen c7, developing the queen, preparing to castle queenside. Knight to h4, harassing the bishop. Bishop g6, castles, castles. And this is the start of the main line. If I turn on the engine, it's going to say that white is much better. But that um, evaluation is really not objective. Black isn't that much worse. White has more space because of the d4 pawn, but black has a lot of play. So yeah, uh, I think that this variation is fine for black. I've actually been looking at it for a long time, and I can see that uh, black's position is perfectly playable. Black can go for moves such as e5 and uh, try to open up the position. If white ever captures, then h takes, not f takes, and then you have the open h file to work with, so a lot of play in the position. Coming back to knight e4, uh, the difference between knight e4 and knight d5 is mostly highlighted with this variation. After queen to d8, uh, which is the main move, uh, not queen b6 or queen c7, which are playable, but then knight takes knight. The difference here is that white can decline the trade and transfer his, uh, his knight to a more useful square, gaining a tempo on the bishop. So a variation which isn't possible after knight d5 is knight to g3 on move 9 for white. And this is one sideline which uh, I fear uh, to play against. And this is what I fear the most in the Scandinavian main line and what I'm preparing for. So now after knight to g3, uh, you obviously have to retreat the bishop or play bishop g4. Bishop g4 is the most common move. Uh, so now if you, if white plays h3, uh, then you are going to capture, basically giving up your, giving up your bishop as uh, it often happens in the Scandinavian, but white's main move here is c3. So you can now see the point between uh, behind the, the move knight e4. Uh, white managed to reinforce his main weakness, and white can now play a calm game without having to worry about the d4 weakness. And most often, what I like the most about the Scandinavian for black is that you are forcing white to play aggressively, to play actively, and to try to seize the initiative, because otherwise d4 is going to be a, a substantial weakness. In this variation, after white plays c3, white has solidified his position, and he's basically better. He has a solid structure and a space advantage. I mean, and he's... Uh, let's, let's see the development... Uh, one, two to finish development, one, two, three, four, and white is ahead in development. Okay. So now after c3, knight b to d7 for black, finishing his development, h3, chasing the bishop away. As I said, you have to take bishop f3, queen f3, bishop d6, putting the bishop to the most active square. And this position is very Karo Khan like, sort of uh, the carp of Karo Khan. Uh, with the light squared bishops being traded off. And here, after knight g3, both sides castle king side, rook a to d1. So very uh, sensible position for both sides. Black is playing on the first three ranks, has less space, but has an active position, and it's fine. And, well, coming back to the main uh, main position, let's, let's go over the main moves once again. e4, d5, queen a5, d4, 
create your setup, create your setup, bishop c4, bishop f5, bishop d2, e6. This is the start of the variation. Now, white can choose between knight d5, which forces queen d8, which is the main line, and after knight takes, you take with the g-pawn. Black can uh, also face knight e4, which can go after queen d8 into knight g3 lines, which, as I said, is something very tricky for black to face. Or black can uh, face a transposition after knight takes f6, queen takes f6, or g takes f6. And uh, white can also choose not to play either of the tempo gaining moves, but play queen to e2, which both sides castle queen side, and it's a very aggressive opening. Let's look at one game now. This game was played between Peter Svidler and Peter Heine Nielsen in 2010. I'm just going to scroll all the way to move 7. So they did create their setups, play the main lines. Uh, knight d5 was played by Peter Svidler, queen d8 forced. Knight takes f6, and uh, Peter Nielsen took with the g-pawn. The engines actually think that queen takes is better, but humans always take with the g-pawn. Bishop b3, the main move. Knight to d7, the main move. Queen to e2, the main move. Queen c7, knight h4, bishop g6, castles, castles. We went over all of this. These were all, these were all the main moves. And now rook... Uh, h to e1 is the most common move, and Peter Swidler went horribly wrong. I said that f4, f5 is a common idea, as well as d5, but in this position when the king is already castled on the queen side, f4 doesn't make much sense, and Swidler played that. f4, if you can see the evaluation here, white was better, f4, white is worse. Uh, Black simply played f5, which is a counterintuitive decision, but makes a lot of sense stopping g4. h3 was played, preparing g4, knight f6. A great square for the knight, looking at the e4 square, which is the reason why knight f5 was played. c3, reinforcing the d4 weakness. Bishop h5. Knight f3 was played, and now black is substantially better. Uh, bishop d6, g3. Knight to e4, rook h to g1. Swidler wants to open up the queen side, but... Uh, the king side, I'm sorry, but it's not really going to bring that much. This structure, even though it seems weird, is very solid, and the knight on e4 is perfect. Rook h to g8, g4, of course he can't take because he loses the knight, so knight takes d2 is played as an intermezzo, knight takes d2, bishop g6 begging him to take and now he's going to recapture with the bishop, so bishop c2, fg4, now once again uh, he would like this trade to happen, he would most probably take with the rook I think, f5 was played however, ef5, hg4, uh, rook g to e8, queen to f3, and you can see that there's a lot of play, there's just a lot of play, this g6 bishop isn't a bad piece, it's a good piece, and it's actually better than white's bishop, because it's staring at uh, the position of the white king. So I think, uh, to conclude the video with, I think that the Scandinavian is a wonderful opening, and the main line, even though queen a5 is a counterintuitive move, serving as a tempo gainer, is very tricky. Let's see how the game finished. Uh, king a7, Knight takes d6, rook takes d6, queen to f4. Swidler's game wasn't that precise. Uh, bishop takes c2, bishop takes c2, rook to e2, check. Uh, this is already just a horrible position, a pawn down and too much activity for black. King to b1, queen b6, threatening checkmate. Queen c1, the queen has to retreat. Rook h6, uh, defending everything. If rook takes uh, f7, then rook to h2. Rook e1, rook h to h2, rook takes, rook takes, a3, queen b5, rook g5, and now the finishing move, rook takes b2. If queen takes b2, which is the only move, then of course queen takes g5, and Peter Swidler resigned in this position. So to conclude with, the main line of the, of the Scandinavian is a wonderful opening. It's very easy to learn, it's very flexible, there are only three moves which you really need to study, which is 8, knight d5, 8, knight e4, and 8, queen to e2. You have a possibility to enter three uh, sidelines, if you wish to, uh, on move uh, 5. If you don't want to play c6 or bishop f5, you can play uh, the sidelines with, with bishop g4 or knight c6, as we looked at. So. An opening with a lot of options and not much studying, a wonderful side weapon to have in your repertoire, perhaps even a main weapon. Uh, thanks very much, I hope you got something from this video, we are going to continue with queen to d6 uh, on move 3 for black in the next video, and stay tuned for more chess, let me know what you think about the main line of the Scandinavian, thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for the support and the kind comments and everything, I really appreciate that, and see you later, bye bye!